uh, maybe I can uh, jump off of that and uh, kind of shift it a little bit into what I feel like a lot of people that I've been speaking to are are struggling with and trying to work out during during this pandemic as we're all sitting here, uh, you know, about six seven months in. Not not all that much has changed in terms of our knowledge of what what what's going to be six months from now, right? It's still very up in the air. And, and people are in this kind of changing space of re- rethinking their life, rethinking what they're doing, rethinking who they're with, rethinking where they are in the, geographically uh, in terms of their career, in terms of what they're studying. Uh, and I see this as like a great opportunity for the world. If, if a person wants to, to jump on this opportunity, there's really, really great, uh, there's, there's great room for change um, and positive change if a person wants to have it. Uh, what I see people struggling with is uh, there, there's two parts to the equation. You know, for me, I don't, I don't remember if I had shared this with you before, uh, part of my breakthrough when I was kind of going through, you know, my own process was I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty type A. I was born and raised to be like an overachiever and a people pleaser and I want to make everybody happy. I'm a firstborn and make my parents very happy. And, uh, you know, I was, I was gifted with certain talents and a musician and uh, a writer and all, you know, all these great things. And it, you know, it was really good for me in middle school and high school. And, uh, you know, but once, once you get into the mindset of being an achiever and getting things done, right. Uh, so you identify with and you put your value of self in that achievement, in that success. And it's a, it's a success driven life. Uh, and it took me till I was in my early twenties and I started having my own spiritual awakenings that, that made me turn from the outside in, uh, and really go through my work. And at a certain point it had, it hit me. It was a Friday night. I remember sitting at a meal with my wife and I like jumped out of my chair. I had this amazing aha moment. Because I was struggling with, there's an idea um, in Torah, there's an idea uh, called Dvekus. Dvekus uh, literally means uh, connection or God, spiritual connection, God connection, uh, God consciousness. And uh, when I was looking at all the different uh, commentaries, uh, you know, thousands of years worth of commentaries on how to understand this idea, very, very much of them were focused on doing acts of kindness and relating to the world a certain way and and accomplishing and and being something in the world that models a godly being and then a whole the whole other half all had to do with a certain spiritual experience a feeling of connection a inner peace a love uh, a joy uh, and i was i was tor- i was kind of tormented by this it seemed like there was a argument it seemed well, am I supposed to go out and accomplish and do and become great and be the image of God, right? As it says, you know, in the Bible, in the beginning of the Torah. Um, or, or am I supposed to like, you know, a little bit more Zen, uh, be present and loving and connecting. And uh, uh, at a certain point, you know, right now it sounds clear, but when you're in the mud and you're in the process, it wasn't clear. And then it hit me that Friday night. I said, oh, there's being and doing. There's expression and experience there's, there's the both, there's the duality, and it, there's the inner and the outer. Uh, and it's that tandem that we're really going for in our lives. But that's, that, that balance is, is hard to strike, right? You know, over time, I've, I've kind of, I've, I've come to the, to the wording of it's kind of the hustle, right? We're going to go hustle and like get work done. And then there's the faith or the inner work, you know, the, the wellness, the meditation, uh, the the reading of spirituality, the meditating on spiritual thoughts and ideas, and and really connecting to the self, and uh, being able to to value the self for who you are without placing it on the successes. So it's it's kind of this dichotomy, uh, and that's that's what I wanted to ask you about. It seems like that's that's similar to the shift on a certain to a certain degree of what of what you made over here, which is the the people pleasing and wanting to get other people's affection through giving of yourself it worked on externally right meaning it's not that it doesn't work it does work you can get what you want in this world if you sacrifice your time and you put your will and your energy and you you give yourself over to a cause or to an idea or to a a person uh to a relationship to a career you can get that um but what are you sacrificing in its stead 
right? Are you giving up on, on, on the faith and the inner connection? Uh, so I wanted to ask you what you feel has worked for you now that, you know, it's not like you turned inwards and then you stopped working <laughs> in the world or you stopped working right. on relationships. You found a way to, to get that balance of both being and doing of the inner experience as well as the outer expression, kind of the hustle and faith working together. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. And that's, you know, well said because you're right. You know, you absolutely can get all of those things. But I think in the end, when you get those things as in the process of sacrificing who you are, you realize that they're not bringing you the joy you thought they would bring, right? It's kind of like the, the people who are doing the hustle and working and, and trying to get all of these things in their life and the things come and they're surrounded by all these amazing, wonderful things and they're still not happy. And that's when they have to sit back and go, what happened? I did all of the right things. I got all of the right stuff, but I'm not happy. And it goes back to what you're, you're talking about is that being and that connection to your higher self and that truth of, of who you are and what you are on a, on a spiritual level. And I think that comes from understanding how to do the doing, right? but also understanding that being has to be the motivating factor that has to come first and foremost. So in the process of meshing these two being and doing, you get into your spiritual practice, right? You get into, um, you know, your daily spiritual practices, which bring you back to your center point. Because you can get into that doing, 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 and get so far away that you're, you've fallen off the track. As, you know, that's kind of how I, I call it. And you've got to get yourself back on the track. So it starts with, for me, saying three things I'm grateful for every morning. You know, and that gets me on the right track. It immediately brings my thoughts from a place of fear to love instantly. And then, of course, getting into some form of meditation or prayer first thing in the morning. And that is your foundation for your day. And it doesn't matter if, you know, what religion you are or if you, you know, are practicing just meditation or prayer or whatever that is. It's that centering place to connect you to source. And I think people don't understand the power of that connection to source, right? Because they think, oh, big deal. It's just going to get my mind in a great spot. That's not what it's about. And, and you and I know this, like when you go inside, that's where all the magic happens. And all of this doing, 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 all of a sudden becomes effortless because you're aligned now with a power and a source that's so much greater than this doing, doing, doing that you can literally take half that doing list and give it over to source and say, you take care of this for me today so that I can work on all this other stuff. Right. right. And, and people don't realize that, you know, that it's not just a matter of going into prayer or setting an intention that is, you know, has no power. I mean, this is powerful, powerful connection that we're talking about that helps you with all of that doing. So I think it, in a sense, the balance comes by allowing the beingness of you to be integrated in the doingness so that it becomes you. So you are that same person when you're doing as you are when you're being, and you just kind of mesh those, those two dualities, I guess. I love that. That's beautiful. And, and even just the way you said it there, uh, of, of going into that meditative practice or prayer, and then you kind of go up, and then from that space, you're a different person coming out. Right? You're, a you're a different person, and, and what, you're, what you're working with, who you're working with, how you're working with, right? It's, it's all different. It's all shifted, uh, both, yeah. yes, psychologically, energetically, and spiritually. Every, everything has moved. Um, it reminded me uh, a couple of days ago, I was looking at a, at a piece uh, from one of the Hasidic masters, and he writes over there uh, this unbelievable uh, 
understanding of the account of the Garden of Eden. And it's as, you know, most people, when they speak about the Garden of Eden, they speak about Adam and Eve and the snake and this and the apple and the whatever, right? So, by the way, it doesn't actually, it's not an apple, but that's, a, that's another story. No one does it say <laughs> Um, a lot of opinions on what it was, but not an apple. So, but, but over there, when it's discussing the actual garden itself, and it talks about like the topography, and it speaks about the, the landscape a little bit, uh, it says that in the Garden of Eden, there was a river, or there were rivers that flowed out of Eden to nurture, to water the garden, right? Out of Eden, there was a flow of, of a river to water the garden. And Spiritually, what that means is when e the word Eden, um, you know what the word Eden means? No, I don't. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It means bliss. It means uh, the, mm. the, deep, the deep bliss, the joy of self at, at the source. It means connecting to source. Right. So right. what it means is when you are in Eden, when you go to that place of bliss and source, which is what you were describing in meditation and prayer, so there's a river that flows from there, meaning it, that's where you get your flow comes when you go to that place and that will come help you water the garden, which is your life. Right? So the river that flows from Eden to help garden the world is when you go to that place, when you reconnect to source, when you reconnect to, to, to the beingness of self and to everything, that's where the flow comes from. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, let, let me ask you, have you...